Hey, welcome to lesson number 10, the last lesson in this unit. Uh, we're going to be looking at modeling sinusoidal functions. So in this, in this graph here, we have a sinusoidal wave that's shown, and it has a maximum value of 50 and a minimum value of 10. So max of 50, minimum of 10. We want to write the equation of the, of the wave in the form of h of t is equal to a, a sine b of t minus c plus d, where a has to be greater than 0. <clears throat> All right, so... In figuring out our amplitude, we know that we have a maximum of 50 and we have a minimum point of 10. Divide that by 2, so 50 minus 10 is 40 divided by 2, would give us an amplitude of 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of all the variables so that we can later, in, we can later plug them in and uh, make the equation of this line here. So we have our amplitude, that's equal to 20. Our period... <clears throat> Well, let's see where we have a repeated motion. I go down the graph, I go back up, and then I go back down and down. So here is my period, and that's equal to 32. So if we're looking for our b value, then b is equal to 2 pi over 32 or pi over 16 if we simplify. Now I want to find my horizontal frame shift. So if this is, we're told this is a sine function. So if this is a, a sine function, then we actually cross the y-axis at a midpoint as my sine wave is going up, is trending upwards here. So we know that this is the point, this is the, the lowest horizontal frame shift that we have which means that I've, I've moved this graph 16 because I've moved it in this direction. I moved it 16 units to the right. So my C value is equal to 16. And last, we're looking for our vertical displacement, our D value. So our vertical displacement, remember that a sine function passes um, through point in between the amplitude, so in between here and here. This is where it crosses the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis. And so if we were to find that halfway point, 50, the max plus the min, divided by 2, our halfway point would be at 30. So my vertical displacement is 30. Now all I need to do is plug all of these into the equation that we're given. And so the amplitude was 20. 20 sine bracket. My, um, my period was pi over 16. My, oh, and then I have t and my, my horizontal frame shift, which was 16. And my vertical displacement, which is 30. Next we have this next example, class example number one. A nail is caught in the tread of a rotating tire at a point N in the following sketch. So here's the nail at point N, and as it's caught in this tread, it, it moves up according to, this, according to this wave. The tire is a diameter of 50 centimeters and rotates at 10 revolutions per minute. After four and a half seconds, the nail touches the ground. So we're going to use the information given to write a scale for each axis. All right, so <clears throat> uh, let's see here. We have um, the tire has a diameter of 50 centimeters. And so and it rotates at 10 revolutions per minute. If we have a diameter of, of 50, let's try it like this then we know that this top point, if this is the height in centimeters, my y-axis is the height in centimeters, my x-axis is the time in seconds, then this highest point must be at 50. So this must be at 50 right here, which means the midpoint here, where the nail actually is penetrated, must be at 25 centimeters. And then, of course, we'll be at zero if it's on the ground. So after four and a half seconds, the nail touches the ground. So if this is my nail and it follows this rotation 
at four and a half seconds it's going to be at zero on the ground so this must be 4.5 it's four and a half seconds <clears throat> that means when it is at the the, uh, the highest point then we're going to be at one and a half seconds right if we if we split that into um, if we split that into a third of our motion. So two thirds of our motion, we're gonna be here, which would be at three seconds. And so now we have a scale, it goes up by one and a half every time. So at this point, it would be at uh, six seconds. Here, we'd be at 7.5, we'd be at nine, and we'd be at 10.5. <clears throat> so determine the equation for the height of the nail as a function of time in the form of h of t is equal to a sine b t plus d, where a has to be greater than zero. All right, so first of all, our, our amplitude, well, we, know, we already know halfway in between the, uh, the max and minimum point is 25, so my amplitude is 25. Um, my period, well, let's look for that repeated motion. So if I'm starting at zero, it go up, go down, go back up to the same motion, it would be six seconds, which means that my B value is gonna be equal to two pi over six or pi over three. Uh, if this is a sine function, then we're starting at our midpoint, which means that our vertical displacement or our D value is going to be 25. And according to our, um, our equation, or our, sorry, our function, we don't have a, a uh, horizontal frame shift. So my equation is gonna be h of t is equal to 25, which was my amplitude, sine pi over three t plus 25. All right, in this next question, um, we're gonna use our equation and determine how far the nearest 10th of a centimeter is the nail above the ground after six and a half seconds. So if I'm using this equation, and for time I'm plugging in uh, six and a half seconds, so at this, at this point here, what is that distance above the ground, and that height above the ground? So h of t, h of six is going to be 25 sine pi over three, 6.5 plus 25. <clears throat> so um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could graph it and find the intersect, or you just plug this into your equation, or sorry, your calculator, and determine what the value would be. 25 sine um, pi over 3 times 6.5. And hold on, I should use some double brackets here. Uh, pi over 3 times 6.5 plus 25, and our answer there is 37.5 centimeters. All right, our, our last example, class example number two. Uh, we have Ferris wheel, the first one created by a bridge builder, was named George Ferris in 1893. The diameter of the wheel was approximately 76 centimeters, and the maximum height of the Ferris wheel was approximately 80 meters. The wheel had 36 wooden carts on the, on the wheel, with each cart able to hold approximately 60 people. The, fierce, the, the wheel was introduced to the world at the World's Fair in Chicago. So if the wheel rotated every nine minutes, use the data in this table to sketch a sinusoidal graph which represents the height of a car in meters as a function of time in minutes. Uh, assume that the car is at its lowest point at zero and draw one complete cycle. All right, so at time zero, it tells us we're at four. So we wanna take all this information and graph it here. So at, at time zero, um, I'm at about four meters, so one below, uh, mid in between 10 and um, <coughs> 5. Uh, at 2.25 minutes, I'm at 42 meters. So at 2.25, 42, 
would be about here. And they didn't give us an like, actual grid to work on, so it's uh, this can be a pretty rough graph. At four and a half minutes, I'm all the way up at 80. Um, at 6.75 minutes, I'm back down to f uh, 42. And then at nine minutes, I'm back at four. So my sine curve, we're sorry, my sinusoidal curve is going to look something like this. All right, using this information, how we want to determine the equation of the graph in the form of h of t is equal to a cosine b t minus c plus d. All right, so in order to do that, we need to look at, again, listing the amplitude, the period, to find our b value. Uh, we'll want to think about our horizontal frame shift and our vertical displacements. All right, so our amplitude, we know that we had a maximum point of 80 and a minimum point of 4 meters. So 80 minus 4 divided by 2. Um, 80 minus 4 is 76 divided by 2. We'd have 38 meters. So A is equal to 38. Our period, well, if we look at how this motion is repeated, we, we start here, go up, come back down, and then it would be repeated at this point, and that would be 9 minutes. So our period is 9 minutes, which is equal to 2 pi over 9. Our horizontal frame shift, um, if you look at a, a cosine curve, so let's look at cosine um, x, and just a regular cosine curve with, uh, without any of the parameters being affected and changed, crosses at a high point right here, which means if we look at our graph, that's our high point that should be crossing here. So we have a horizontal frame shift at our max point, which is at four and a half minutes. So my horizontal frame shift then is 4.5 minutes, and that's going to be to the right. So it would, we would subtract Z. And our vertical displacement. If we add our max plus our min and divide by 2, 84 divided by 2, we would have 42 meters. And that would be our d value. And if we look at that, 42 meters, that's where we're at the midpoint of our, um, of our cosine curve here. OK, so we can now plug this into this equation, where h of t is equal to the amplitude, 38 cosine 2 pi over 9 t and it's minus 4.5 because to the right plus my vertical displacement which was 42. Now lastly how high to the nearest meter is the cart five minutes after the wheel starts rotating. So five minutes after we're looking for h of 5 is equal to 38 cosine times 2 pi over 9, 5 minus 4.5 plus 42. So again, we can plug this into our calculator or you can um, or you can graph it and look at where, it, where that intersection point is or where that, uh, that 0 is. But 38 cosine uh, 2 pi over 9 times 5 minus 4.5 plus 42. And, uh, oh, hold on, I missed a bracket somewhere, sorry. So 38 cosine, this double bracket there, 2 pi over 9. Uh, 5 minus 4.5, or times 0.5, close the bracket, plus 42. And there we go, 77.7 .7 meters, or around to the nearest meter would be 78 meters.
And how many seconds after the wheel starts rotating does the cart first reach 10 meters from the ground? This one, it's the easiest to graph. So 38 cosine. So double bracket. Notice I'm putting double brackets here. Um, two, 2 pi divided by 9. Um, x minus 4.5 plus 42. And it's at 10 meters. So what's that time? frame going to be and we're of course going to have to adjust the window window settings I haven't done that yet so let's wait for the think window settings and so we can use this table to adjust our window settings because we know what the max and minimum points are going to be and so I could be it could be at zero um, we could have a maximum point uh, let's keep it at 10 minutes because it was at nine and we will go up just by one each time. For my, my minimum scale though, let's make that zero. And we'll put it up to 85 for a maximum point. And we'll have a scale of 10. So that should give us a good graph. All right, and we're looking for the intersection at 10. And um, yeah, the, we're looking for the first intersection point to the nearest second when it first reaches 10 meters. So second function trace, let's look for that intersects. And my first curve is, is over here. Second curve is down here. And then we'll guess. So our intersection point is at 0.8159. So 0 0.8159, and that is 0.8159 of an hour. Good morning, staff. We are singing our song in the staff room. So all staff in the staff room that would like to uh, practice the song. Thanks. So if we multiply that by 60... 0.8159 times 60 gives us 49 seconds.